something to do not just with COD, but with the ups and downs and backs and forths of this county. We've had four public works directors, a couple of them interim and short term. Uh, we've had uh, all kinds of planning uh, upheavals and, and transitions. And uh, Mr. McSorley's worked both <laughs> in both uh, sides of that, so I uh, might have some insights. But I, my, my view of this is that that creep doesn't happen unless we've failed to either abide by our existing agreements and definitions and missions and, and roles and responsibilities, or we haven't created enough to, to, be, to, to guide us well. I think we have a little of each in this case. And once again, I think just from the recommendations before us, which I don't think are comprehensive by any means, I, I think we have some work to do on that, and I would hope the parties could get together in the same combination to review those. Uh, regarding the, the thing that we all agree on, or at least that I, I'm hearing, I believe the COG has brought millions of dollars into this county for, for roads, for transportation projects that we never would have gotten without it. And I think there are two reasons for that. One is the aforementioned funding uh, streams don't necessarily go directly to cities or counties, that they go through transportation agencies, and this one is set up for that, at least partly for that purpose. So most of us would say, all right, that, that's a good idea. Should there be policy advice and consent by the local jurisdictions forming this JPA? Absolutely. And should there be a protocol to accomplish that, that we do every year without fail in a timely uh, fashion? Absolutely. And I think that that's for our representatives on the COG from both jurisdictions to be able to work out and make sure it occurs. Uh, I, I think that there are many other uh, protocols that could have been followed that would have avoided the uh, train wrecks and, and issues that we've seen before this board over the last uh, couple of years. But that's water under the bridge. It's what we do next that will matter the most. And my hope is that uh, two talented people like the uh, director of COG and our, uh, our public works director would be able to figure this stuff out uh, with the advice of the entities I've described and come back to us with a unified uh, uh, agreement or set of proposals anyway for, for our review. I'm not sure this is what's before us today is that. I think it's one piece of it and I think it's an important contribution. But I'm looking for balance. I'm looking not to... Uh, offend or, or disrespect the uh, important needs of the City of Angels and, and its concerns for representation and, and equity. I want to make sure that the public uh, doesn't feel that it has processes that are imposed upon it and, uh, or, or that it doesn't feel it has some uh, effective uh, way to have its concerns heard. Uh, there are a lot of things we have to work out here. Um, I don't think it will happen today, but I think we need to take input and then develop a working group to, to get that consensus and that combination of interests reconciled. Um, I thank you for giving me this time. I apologize for my leaving. I will catch up on what is said, and I wish you all good luck and Godspeed in your deliberations. I'd like to go back to the public. Good afternoon. I'm Zero McDaniel from San Andreas. Um, I want to address the, the piece about the public. I think it's a very slippery slope, a very dangerous place to go when you um, talk about eliminating public input. Um, I don't know whether there's 40 committees or not, but if there are, I, I would agree with Steve that um, I don't know that any of them are actually paid for what they do and the time they put in. I know I've spent a lot of time from the very get-go going to the park commissioner's meetings. I know they're very dedicated. They worked endlessly to come up with their master plan, and I know they're not being compensated for that time. This isn't something that you don't already know, but there are unlimited amount of, of citizens in our county who passionately care about this county, who are willing to work without being paid, who are, um, who are very talented, who have lots of uh, expertise in different areas, 
who are willing to put the time in, who, who don't necessarily, I, I think for the most part, don't want to be um, contrary. They want to work. They want to help. Use those people. I, I, I ask you to use the people that care enough to give the time. I think it's very unreasonable to think that, again, um, Mr. Garcia, Mr. McSorley, and whoever else is involved can't work together and work out the, the problems that may or may not be there. Um, I have been very involved in the San Andreas Community Plan, which we were told from the get-go that we would get no help. There was no money. A group of citizens, and we a grassroots, grassroots group of citizens for over four years worked on that plan and has finally been submitted. We, <coughs> we were given different directions from the different planning people in place, the different uh, agencies, and it was finally accomplished and it's been submitted. I also have been um, involved from the get-go and one of the actual people, one of, one of the people that uh, worked on the mobility plan. Now, because, maybe it's because of the fact that we had so many directors in public works and in planning and this and that and the other, I guarantee you we would not have had that opportunity if, we, if the Council of Governments had not been there to help us get the grant and facilitate the grant. And in no time were the Council of Government directing the citizens what to do. It was a very open process and I think that's important that, that those processes be open to the public and open to um, being um, criticized or, or whatever. And that's the, the way it's been. Now, we came to the Council of Governments with that mobility plan, and uh, Mr. Tryon, I believe you did vote for that. Um, you didn't? I think you did at one point. I think you did at one point. You voted on that. But um, as far as roundabouts or whatever it is, that's the, that's the sensational um, headline. But if you really look at the plan, that's not what, that's not what the plan is about, is roundabouts. We care about San Andreas. We care about, um, we see this as, a, as an opportunity, a single opportunity to change the paradigm of the Calaveras County seat. This is our seat here in, in Calaveras County, San Andreas. And this uh, plan, it may not be um, adopt, you know, implemented fully, but we like it. The citizens voted on it. The citizens like it. We had the opportunity to meet with Mr. Garcia and um, COG, and we are grateful for that, and planning over, the, over these issues. And we continue to want to meet with them and work um, whatever has to be done. But back to the point I'm making about um, the citizens being involved and the citizens having a say. I think the COG is, um, should have citizen representation. Now, I I'm, happen to also be on the Calaveras Unified School Board, and I sat on the ca this uh, county SALPA for four years, which is the JPA that deals with um, special education. Calaveras Unified has two-thirds amount of children at any other district, but every other district has the same representation. I don't know how to address that, which was brought up by, I believe, Mr. Walensky, but um, it works. Um, I hope that you will consider consider what I've said about the public being involved because you have a lot of resources out here and a lot of people that want to help. And again, many of these things would not have happened because of the dysfunction of what was going on with the county. And the Council of Governments was there to, to step up to the plate. Um, get the money for us, and I don't think it was a waste of money. I don't, I don't think it's a waste of money, especially if this board of, if the Board of Supervisors will not just throw it under the bus. Please work together. Please um, don't just throw everything the public has worked on out the door. 
it, it just won't be fair and and um, I think you risk the, the possibility of the public just saying what's the point and I and I and I respect those of you on the board that don't agree with me but um, I, I hope that you will consider what I've said thank you Good afternoon. My name is Ron Randall. Uh, Madam Chair, Supervisors, City Council members, uh, I believe there needs to be change made to the Calaveras Council of Governments because it seems they answer to no one. On one specific example, on May 4, 2010, Supervisor Calloway said to the Calaveras Council of governments. This is a quote. On specific parcels, COG will get back to the respected landowners. You will need to get back to Mr. Randall. To this point, nobody has ever contacted me concerning that. It appears to me they don't even answer to supervisors, even those supervisors who sit on their board. Also, I don't believe they should be making policy such as land use designations, because when the, Calaver when the Council of Governments is the lead agency, the citizenry has no redress because they answer to no one. I agree with the Public Works uh, recommending specifications, uh, funding shift projects, uh, planning and activities to local agencies. They are under the Board of Supervisors, oh, if they are under the Board of Supervisors or City Council members, COG should not be involved in the decision uh, originally. Maybe before the changes are made, uh, they could be included. And I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Randall. Hello, my name is Les Martin in Valley Springs. I just want to make uh, a couple of background comments and then a recommendation to uh, Angels Camp uh, Planning Commission or, or are your board of directors? Uh, or city council. Oh, city, city council. Thank you very much. Um, I've looked through and, and with a, a group of my friends, we have seen many things going on with that always has a stamp of council of governments on it. One is Calaveras Transit Authority. Why are we funding this thing? This We talk about getting grant funding, going out, having people trolling for grants here and there. You're going to have to use uh, downriggers from now on because there isn't any money out there. But it's still coming out of our pockets. We're running empty buses. We're spending tomfoolery money for bus stops, this, that, and the other thing, and walking trails. And we've got thousands, hundreds of thousands of acres of woods up here. I uh, basically say, you know, we're, we're out of money. The country's out of money. It's time to just start looking at some areas and knock them down and I would if I was uh, Angels Camp I would just back out of a JPA right this moment. Thank you. Thank you Mr. Martin. Good afternoon. Ed Anderson here from Burson. I'm a property owner, stakeholder, and a taxpayer. I've been here before. And, uh, Marita, I'm going to be real brief, and it may not agree what I'm going to say, agree with what you want me to say, but this well, is what I'm going to say. Well, then your time is up, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. This is one of our problems. No accessibility to our elected officials. When COG is in charge, the public, the people, do not have an elected representative bringing back the information to the other elected representatives on the COG board. And I know what I'm talking about. We've had nothing but grief for the last year in the Valley Springs area. What could stop it? You know, a, a glass of wine is good when it's ready. We've got it requires something like 50,000 people in the county, where well, we have 40,000, 
we're trying to cram this down the people's throat when the economy is terrible people losing their homes and everything you know the big question though is the authority how can cog have more authority than the board of supervisors because time after time after time both the cog director was addressed and the board of supervisors but it was as though the board of supervisors were a rubber stamping what was going on with cog you can't expect the public oh hey mr tryon i agree with your previous remarks i do i didn't with supervisor walensky but he's not here so i won't go into that i better move on here um anyway for the past year the only thing i've seen in my half of the county maybe it's not half but it's a damn big area is uh two cogmobiles and people on payroll from cog and accomplishing nothing for the people that were attending all the meetings director mcsorley earlier though he made a statement that cog was responsible for getting the 12 26 monies on grant i'll give him that but he caused me so damn much grief for the whole year he's not welcome down there in burson anymore and i wouldn't recommend going to valley springs anymore tim now one thing that if this continues this gpa i think it should be stopped i think you should terminate the contract with cog on the jpa i uh i just see the delegation of authority to cog that i don't see any way of overcoming as long as cog's got its hands into everything it should only be in transportation number one not in other projects for christ's sakes it was started in the county for transportation caltrans work state highways the back roads and things uh not community plans not dealing with the public they don't know how to do it okay and then i want to ask mr garcia what is the penalty for non-compliance with the county or the council from angels on what the feds and the state require is that clear enough that question okay loss of funding loss of funding total loss of funding so you're all then you wouldn't have any paychecks coming in right or a cog wouldn't we wouldn't be paying roads and you wouldn't be paying the director of cog how much do we subsidize how much does the county subsidize cog the county does not subsidize cog okay one other thing uh the two hundred twenty-five thousand dollar grant from or two hundred fifty thousand it was some way at some point requiring a fifty thousand dollar match was that for the community plan at valley springs the fifty thousand dollars from the county or or is that too much to get into now madam no, chair those um we have all that information that says where the money's coming from that we can share with you if okay. you would like to see where okay. all the money comes from yeah no that's not my question uh, but thank you for that uh now my final one-liner and i'll leave there's certain people in the audience doesn't like me up here either Marita, so <laughs> you're not alone uh, this is my final statement uh any members of the public should be allowed to participate on any projects in the county we have a lot of talented retired people in the county and i don't disagree with them being on these boards or committees however i totally disagree with those public having a vote on taxpayers money it's not appropriate 
and he is not responsible for my monies, my taxpayers' money. That's got to be handled by elected officials. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Mike Dawson, Burson. Um, what I would really like is to really not have a cog just from the duplication of, of um, administrative costs, communication issues. But those, uh, the reality is, is it's probably something that's going to stay with us uh, either as an RTPA or an MPO. What you need to do today in working with the Joint Powers Agreement is to maximize my elected officials' influence in that process. That's the Board of Supervisors, City Council. So that um, we have as voters, as electors, as taxpayer, uh, voters and taxpayers can have some kind of accountability into the projects that are attempted at the priority, how much money is spent, what grants we go after. Because finally, it's that funding that with the strings attached that really has the full power. And if the elected officials can control that funding, focus it and direct it in the most efficient way, that's the best for the county, for the taxpayers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Gary Caldwell, Valley Springs. Uh, you'll forgive me if I say things that everyone already knows up there, but there may be some people in the room who, who aren't aware of some of the uh, functions and, and responsibilities of some agencies. Um, I'm going to go through the memo, uh, try to go through the memo here point by point, Madam Chair. Um, one thing I did want to say on the outset, though, is that uh, RTPA is a general umbrella term. Regional Transportation Planning Agency. And underneath it are such organizations as COGS and MPOs and local transportation commissions, but they're all RTPAs. It's a requirement of state law that each region have an RTPA. And in the case of Calaveras County, it happens to be the, the Council of Governments. And the uh, roles and responsibilities of the RTPAs are outlined in state law. The JPA you have with the City of Angels is how you two are going to work together to carry out the state law requirements as far as roles and responsibilities. Um, primarily, the, the uh, Council of Governments and RTPs in general are responsible for the planning, the programming, the prioritizing, and the funding of projects in their region. And I know that I've had this discussion before uh, the COG in, in, in the past with respect to monies that come to the COG. Uh, there's always the misunderstanding when it comes to major funds that they go to the uh, City of Angels or they go to the, the county. They don't. They come to the Calaveras Council of Governments. The Council of Governments then, based upon whatever decisions it makes with respect, with respect to funding projects, then disseminates the money. That, now, I'm not talking about highway users tax now. I'm talking about typical federal and state funds, the major ones. And in order to get your project funded, if you're either the city or the county, there's a call for projects. The county, and I think uh, the chairman identified that maybe the county in the past has dropped the ball with respect to identifying projects. but. The uh, solicitation for projects goes out to the county and the city, and the, hopefully the county and the city prepare a list of projects they'd like to see uh, funded by the Council of Governments. They submit it. The Council of Governments reviews those proposals. Maybe there's advocacy on the parts of the members from the county and the city with respect to individual projects. But that's the way they're funded and prioritized. Unfortunately, every now and then, and this occurred about five or six months ago, as I recall, um, 
those of you who may remember, uh, there was a call for projects under the T program, Transportation Enhancement Program. And the uh, county submitted some projects. The, submit, the city submitted a, uh, one or two projects. They were funded. As a matter of fact, they're funded to the extent that the funds necessary actually go into the next five-year period of the STIP. But about five or six months ago, the public works director came to the board here and said, I think these are some great projects that I'd like to see you approve. And you did. You approved some T projects, some of which were in <coughs> conflict, well, most of which were in conflict to the existed adopted T projects, even those that the board had already submitted. And in fact, the question came up, and I don't know whether it was you, uh, Madam Chair, or not, but what are we going to do? Are we going to have to give up our project in order to fund this one over here? Because there's only a finite amount of money. And so uh, the discussion uh, raged on. And soon after that, the public works director appeared before the COG and said, we have a conflict here. The Board of Supervisors just adopted a list of projects for the T program that is in conflict with what you have on your programming. And that's, that was true because it was a recent change of heart by the Board of Supervisors with respect to the projects that it had already identified three or four years earlier. Now, the problem with this is that the T program goes on to the California Transportation Commission. This is a, could be a lengthy project approval process that you have to go through. It's not something the COG itself makes a decision on. They make a recommendation. And I think... I, I know the members of the board and certainly those who serve on the Council of Governments know that the COG deals with Caltrans. Almost all the monies, federal and state monies, come through Caltrans. They deal with Caltrans. They deal with the Transportation Commission in Sacramento, the California Transportation Commission, with respect to programming of projects. And that's the way it's done. Um, and I, I, I think if there's, uh, if there's competition... I think it's only because there's limited funds and everybody has their project they'd like to see funded. But every program is not limitless in money. And with respect to a uh, single list of prioritized projects, as was uh, mentioned in the report here, um, if you go to the RTP, there's a section of the RTP, the Regional Transportation Plan, there's a section that identifies short-range projects, and there's another section that identifies long-range projects. And those short-range projects and long-range projects are projects that are submitted by this Board of Supervisors and the City Council of the City of Angels to be uh, put into the Regional Transportation Plan, incorporated in there. And it, ultimately, the COG will approve that plan, hopefully. The COG will approve that plan, and there will be one list. And that's the list that gets funded because almost all funding sources dictate that it be part, that the project be part of the RTP, identified in the RTP. It has to be consistent. You can't just pull a project out of the air. Um, as far as adequately represented on the council, we're talking about the city and the county now, adequately represented on the council. I, I think um, the makeup, I like the makeup right now. The suggestion that the, that public members be done away with or somehow stifled just is horrible to even suggest that. You know, if anything, uh, I think that the public member portion of the COG maybe ought to be expanded. As was pointed out, there are other organizations that are all public members, such as the Board of Supervisors Planning Commission is all made up of public <coughs> members. None of those commissioners are elected, and yet they make decisions on zoning at their meetings. Zoning in the county, land use decisions that are sort of critical. The only time that the board sees a zoning issue is if it's appealed to the board from the Planning Commission. Uh, as far as accountability of those public members, the four elected members who appoint the public members, that is two from City of Angels and two from the county, can also uh, delete those members. Uh, if they're unhappy with their conduct, not necessarily the way they vote, but their conduct, then they can do away with those members, just as the way they put them in. Um, also, um, I wanted to uh, point out that, um, for those of you who don't know, I, some, some cases preaching to the choir, but 
But last November at the COG meeting, Mr. Garcia appeared and at the podium and said to the COG that he wanted to manage 95% of the COG's programs. He wanted to do that. Well, he's carrying that threat through today by having this workshop. And with respect to, uh, he mentioned earlier about the reserve. There was an argument about the reserve, or discussion, I shouldn't say argument, discussion about the reserve. Uh, the reserve amounted to about $400,000. Typically, the Council of Government keeps some of the reserve so that it has some money to match available federal monies that might come down the pike. You never can anticipate when federal monies are going to become available. So the Council of Government sometimes keeps some of the reserve. $400,000. Now, this is a department who carried over $3.1 million last year. As of June 30th, they carry over $3.1 million, according to the auditor's office. Um, talking about putting projects on the street. I like that term. We want to put projects on the street, let's spend some of that $3 million. Um, with respect to uh, the TE projects, I wanted to uh, mention also that um, somebody else has mentioned about we got to cooperate and we got to get um, people talking to each other. I, I think with respect to collaboration, because I saw that word here, I don't, I don't see that in the past year. And I've attended, except for the times when I had medical problems, I've attended uh, probably 90 percent of the Council of Government's meetings for the past six or eight years. And I don't see collaboration coming out of the county staff with respect to getting along with the COG. Um, I see um, contradictions in, in certain projects and, if, if nothing else, uh, obstruction. And it was pointed out at the last meeting, and I'm sure the chair will remember this, um, the report came from the uh, Cox consultant that said that the county is stalling the delivery of a bike path up in Arnold and also the path down in the Cosgrove Creek area. And the explanation when asked by Mr. Garcia was that his role in the project was unclear and it needed to be clarified. And um, this is a project, or these projects, both of them, have been around for years. The roles of the various agencies were clearly identified when the projects were approved by the COG. At least uh, I felt they were clearly identified. Mr. Caldwell, could you kind of move on to those changes that you would like to see? Around? Well, with respect to, uh, I noticed that one of the alternatives is not on here, and that, of course, you could go back to a local transportation commission. I'm not suggesting you do that. But uh, with respect to uh, the changes, with, I, I like it the way it is. I, I, if anything, I would get more public members on there if I were to change the makeup. And with respect to who controls what, I think the Council of Governments, whether it comes to their roles as dictated by state law, should continue to carry those out. There should not be uh, competition from either agency, whether it's the county or the city of Angels, with respect to who does what. And let me tell you, sometimes um, who plays what role is dictated by history of that agency. If they're unable to carry out projects in the past, nobody wants them to take over a project to begin with now. So that may have played some role in this. And I'd love to see the, uh, the Council of Government be a permanent agency. I'd love to see that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Caldwell. Good afternoon. My name is Pat Pereira. I'm from Campus Seco. Um, I've also prepared a, a letter. It's not complimentary, but it's entertaining. Um, I um, think the JPA and uh, COG should be eliminated. Um, our homes and our land are our investments, the biggest investment we shall ever make in our lifetime. I don't like the idea of COG making, <clears throat> COG making land use decisions or zoning. I think that should come through our planning department and our board of supervisors. Um, we were not given the propriety, the civility, or the courtesy of a simple mail notice 
warning us that issues would be affecting our lands and our lifestyles before the grant was applied for in Valley Springs. And I think that if you're going to make any modifications, if you keep COG on board, you should um, clarify that prior to any grant application, the proposal should be brought before the landowners for their approval. Because our lifestyles are changing, our property rights are being affected, development and policy and decisions in these grants, conditions, uh, are being made without our knowledge. And I think it is a crime. And I do not think they should have the ability to do that. It brings to tears the public's frustration with what CCOG has done in Valley Springs and how this has been allowed to continue without someone putting a stop to it or a place for the landowners to go for help. We were absolutely helpless. And we have a problem because we have a part of the public that claims to represent the Valley Springs area and a part of the community that isn't represented at all, and yet they're the ones that have the Valley Springs community plan. So you have this war of public participation from people who live outside the area that have completely hijacked the Valley Springs plan as their own, and they don't live, work, or own property there. So where do you draw the line? Do you want CCOG to make that decision because they have a, a grant and they have the authority to spend it? It's $255,810, and we want to avoid looking at that. I'd say that's a waste of taxpayers' money. And how can you go on and not recognize the errors, the mistakes, the lack of public participation, um, the caring about the people that actually live there? It's an absolute crime. It's disgusting. It's revolting. It's malfeasance in its worst form. And I, am for one, can't tolerate it. And I think that CCOG... The JPA needs to be terminated. I think they're, uh, they may have, um, have some type of use in the transportation end of it, but I think in the land use planning, they absolutely do not belong there. They have not showed their um, courtesies to the public. They ignore us. I went to meeting after meeting and was lied to. I asked specifically if Campus Seca was involved in this greater Valley Springs plan, and I was told both by Mr. McSorley and Joyce Teckel, oh, no, no, you're not involved. In fact, if you look, the name of our community is completely off the map. So in a quick glance, it didn't appear that we were even there. And I, d I don't take that lightly because I've worked on this project for a year. And I have probably 16 three-inch binders of information, letters to the editor, um, complaints, um, because I care about where I live. I bought and paid for the land that I have, and I don't like CCOG or anyone else telling me what I am going to do with my property and a complete development shift in policy without my knowledge. I think that's stepping way over the bounds of CCOG's authority. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else have any suggested changes or comments on the JPA agreement? Okay, I'm going to bring it home. Mr. Segala. Uh, I'm Al Segala. Uh, president of the Calaveras County Taxpayer Association. Kind of reluctant to come here because this is so confusing. I'd hate to say something and screw things up worse than it is now. Okay, and you can. It <laughs> <laughs> uh, seems like there's three things involved there's uh, purpose, and there's people, and there's process. And there's 
questions about personality problems. That's people problems. I don't think that is something that that uh, can be solved by changing structure. Um, there's a there's a process going on that's extremely complex, and from the point of view of the taxpayer, a little bit scary, because accountability seems to be lost somewhere. We're dealing on with grant money that has strings attached, and many times I understand the the knowledge of what those strings are is not known until after you get the money. Uh, but as a taxpayer, we want to have accountability, and we don't want the money, our money to be wasted. So one of the things we have to be concerned about is purpose. Um, if the purpose of uh, a joint powers agency is to coordinate uh, paving of roads or creating roads, uh, highways, you know, I have no problem with that as a taxpayer. The funds have to be available for that. And, uh, but if the purpose is more than that, if it's to carry another agenda, there's some talk of an agenda, 20, agenda 21 from the UN that has changed names a, a number of times, and sometimes it's known as smart growth and has some other names as well. Uh, this agenda wants to change our form of government and the, and the structure of our communities and even uh, land use within the counties and within uh, a good area. Uh, well, actually, the whole United States, and that's why they're all similar. And so we need to look at that. That's being advanced, not very directly, but it's open enough where you, we can understand it. You can just go to a website, Agenda 21, and you'll see the UN plan, and you'll see it copied, uh, and you'll see it copied uh, in the COG documents as to what COG uh, wants to uh, help create in, uh, in the Valley Springs area. And uh, this needs to be brought right out in the open, and our elected representatives need to, to grab it by the ears and look at it in the eyeballs. And, and if you're in agreement with it, fine. Some parts of it really uh, sound great. Um, the other parts uh, could cause problems in its implementation. And we don't need to change our form of government. We, we don't need to create communes or anything like that. So uh, in a nutshell, uh, the people problems, I think, can be resolved with, uh, with good communication. And we have good communicators here. The, uh, the problems of a uh, uh, process, I, I think it's so complex. I don't even know what powers you do have. I don't even know. That so much of what's happening here is imposed by state law and federal law, and even the uh, subject of, of uh, how our communities are to be changed is, is prescribed through this uh, Agenda 21, which is underneath a lot of this. And so as a taxpayer, what are we to do? Well, uh, the, one of the former speakers said that uh, he's more comfortable having our, our representatives, whether you agree with them or not, or our board of supervisors, uh, be responsible because we can quite easily unelect them as well as elect them. And they tend to be more responsible than the state government and the federal government. Um, I certainly agree with that. To, to the question of abolishing COG, uh, okay, I don't even know if you have the power to do that. Um, if you did, then there has to be, according to the law, as I understand it, a joint powers agency to coordinate between the city and, and the uh, county and the state regarding uh, uh, transportation. Uh, if that was formed, would it be any better in COG? And would it, be, would it have to follow the same uh, uh, hidden agenda that COG is following, the uh, Agenda 21? Uh, if it does... And if it has to, then why change? We, we, we need to, our changes has to come at the state level and the federal level. So as a taxpayer, um, I would urge you to use maximum wisdom, look out for the interest of the taxpayer, and, and try to get as transparent as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the city council has to leave. They have a mm -hmm. meeting. Um, a council meeting they have to go to. Does anyone have any changes they would like to make or have us consider 
to the JPA agreement that you could do quickly so I can give the city council time to say something? Is there anybody else besides Pat who hasn't spoken? Tom, I'm fine. Thank you. Yes, could you make it quick because I have to let the city council have time. My name is Laura Most. I do live in Rancho Calaveras, but I also own property in La Contina. Quit laughing, Gary. I'm sorry. I was not involved with the Greater Valley Springs plan until we of Rancho Calaveras were included in the Greater Valley Springs community plan at the August 27, 2009 meeting. We were included with a clicker vote with the biggest majority of the people living outside of Rancho Calaveras. I was asked, why were you not involved before then? I'm very sorry that I'm getting so emotional. No, no. Do you have something? Are these changes you want to make to the JPA? No, I just wanted to read. I'll just have to give this to you because I have four deaths in my family at this time, and I wasn't involved, but I've become very involved afterwards. Okay, thank you. That will be part of the record. Okay. In the interest of time, I'm sorry, Pat, I need, I want to go, does staff have any comments they make before I go to the city council? Very briefly. I'd like to address some of the issues that came up. Again, the answer was if we didn't comply with state and federal laws regarding transportation projects, we would lose state and federal funding for those transportation projects. Regarding some of Mr. Caldwell's comments, the call for projects for T-funding was in November of 2005. There has not been a subsequent call for projects. T-funding is being programmed out now to 2013 on that original list. Things have changed between now and then. We'd like to have another call for projects to update that. When Public Works came to the Board of Supervisors with an OWP list, which identified projects that should be considered for defunding, those projects were projects that had not been before the CTC, projects that had not been accepted by Caltrans. They were not real projects yet. That was last year. This year, those projects continue to be not before the CTC, not before Caltrans. They're not real projects. This includes the Arnold Rim Trail. So having discussions on those projects is a bit premature since they have not been obligated. They're not real. And again, if action is taken between now and then, great. If not, then it will be before the Board again to reconsider those projects or to move those projects forward so that they are real and they can be constructed. But currently, no action has been taken on those projects. Well, there are additional comments by Mr. Caldwell, which I can address to him in person. He seemed to be having some problems with the way that we operate. And I would just like to say that our project delivery over the last several years, last year we, let's see, 2008-2009, we delivered over $3 million. 2009-2010, $2.4 million. 2011, we're expecting about $8.7 million. 2012, we're expecting about $5.2 million. And that is without receiving additional funding. We are delivering projects. But that's not all through the COP. That's through stimulus money. Indeed. So again, if you're looking at, as Mr. Caldwell stated, if you're looking at rewarding jurisdictions that provide or that put projects out, we certainly do that. If you're unable to deliver the projects, perhaps either you need to pass those projects on to the agency that can deliver them, or you need to find projects that are deliverable. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. I'd like to move to the City Council, since you have to leave. Elaine. I see. I'll make my comments. I believe in collaboration between the City and the County on the COG. And regarding the JPA, I agree with most of what has been said about amendments to the JPA by Mr. Garcia. Land use planning, housing belong in the City and County, not in the COG. 
and uh, clarification of policies and procedures is essential to the uh, successful continuation of the COG, or if the COG was dissolved, the local transportation commission that would take over if the if a COG was uh, going to demise and. Uh, The, the technical advisory committee was was mentioned. I believe that has to be more transparent as to projects that are in the process so the city and county are fully apprised and not in the dark as to what is going on. And regarding um, the uh, appropriation of funds to the city and county, for projects. I believe there are already rules in place regarding the distribution of the funding between the city and county, and that would have to be part of the JPA amendments, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. I'm not quite sure on that one. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Mr. Downey? Yeah, thank you, uh, Chairperson Murray. Murray. Um, it's Madam. 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 So Madam. Yeah. <laughs> Chairperson. <laughs> Chair, yeah. Anyway, um, regarding this issue, I have uh, several comments, and I, I'd like to keep them, you know, as brief as I can. But uh, in my uh, in my duty to uh, look up information regarding this, um, I was struck that uh, when I when I did a search on this, that um, dating back to June 10, 2004, um, there was an article in Union Democrat um, stating Cog and County, Cog County relationship rocky, and uh, basically um, at, on May 17, 2005, the county actually voted at that time to dissolve the Cog, and that was a three to two vote, um, and the issues at the time were exactly point on exactly where we're at today. That was 2005. And I, and I will quote some of this from the article. Rob Houghton, Director of Public Works, asked COG board members to consider seven additional county projects. He handed out a list of projects explaining that he would have budget, he would have budget amounts and a more complete description of each project by next month's COG meeting. The unfortunate part was that those weren't delivered on time. That was in 2005. Um, that's a problem. That's a problem that needs to be addressed on all levels. Um, in, in, in response to that, um, it was because the, the county was obviously uh, questioning the, the COG and its abilities and, and where they were going. Um, there was a memo sent out from George Bondero who was the executive director of the COG, and this went out to the technical advisory committees. And if you, you would allow me to read this, it's real short. Re recently, some questions have arisen from the legal agencies regarding administration of contracts funded through the overall work program, OWP. The project sponsors have expressed interest in conducting their own RFP process and administering their own contracts with the selected consultants. Participation in the solicitation for consultants and selection by the sponsoring agency is certainly encouraged. However, the COG will continue to administer all contracts with consultants funded through the OWP. COG is responsible for timely use of funds and ensuring that state and federal requirements are met during the contracting process. COG is the responsible authority for allocation, expenditure, and use of the various funds available through the OWP. The associated accounting and reporting required simply prelude, preclude delegating contract, contracting authority to local agencies. This is consistent with practice of other regional transportation planning agencies around the state. And this was from George Bandero. Only reason I bring this up is that I feel that this has been a, a problem for a long time. This is not something new, and yet I have not heard anything related to these issues that happened in 2005. That disturbs me. Um, other things that I want to address is my opinion on the public 
in the on the cog board i really question the accountability there as an elected official i'm accountable to the people that elected me as as are the supervisors when you allow people from the public to vote on something that you're accountable for i think we made a big mistake with public funds would i be for a advisory board absolutely the county already does that with what they call their solid waste task force that's an advisory board that takes into into consideration all the um the different uh professions of people who's who does this who does this who does this and it's a meeting of the minds that allows everybody to come together to make a recommendation that then goes in front of your elected officials that to me is the way things should handle be handled that's all about accountability um we we tend to forget that we're not a democracy in this country we're a representative republic and the people that get voted are voted in to represent them and when anybody gets appointed that accountability changes that that changes and what are the uh, consequences of that i think everybody needs to look at that um in 2005 when there was these issues regarding the cog the operating budget of the cog was five hundred and eighty thousand dollars um the reserves at that time were 5.1 percent of the operating budget which was around thirty thousand dollars so a lot has changed since 2005 but that was it and the quote i believe uh the comment was maintaining a reserve account is fiscally prudent and considered standard practice in most public agencies but that was only 5.1 percent uh we've changed a little since then um i also looked at back uh the question was in 92 or the county represents 92 percent the city represents eight percent um and that was looked at at the same time um the cog was to be eliminated um and it looked like in 2003 12 percent of the funds went to the